Hey everybody, it's Dom Rocks, and today we're going to go through February 15th, 2021, Banned and Restriction Announcement. That's right, Wizards had a Banned and Restriction Announcement, ugh, Banned and Restricted Announcement today. And, uh, oh boy. Alright, to start, Omnath, Locust from Creation, is banned from Suspended and Historic, and so, and Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath is banned, Pioneer, Balustrade Spy, Undercity Enforcer, Teferi, Oh. Uro and Wilderness Reclamation are banned. Modern, Field of the Dead, Mystic Sanctuary, Sidney Spear Guide, Dibble Trickery, and Uro are banned. Legacy, Arkham's Astrolabe, Dread Heart Arcanist, Oko, and surprisingly now Uro <laughs> are banned. And Vintage, Luris is unbanned, which, thank gosh! Also, there's a Cascade rules change. Um, so, we're gonna go through everything. First of all, before we look at Wizards' reasons for banning these, we're gonna go over my opinion and w what I think of all these cards being banned. Up first is Omnath. Okay. Omnath is a mistake of a magic card because it was the it's the checkmark card. The blue is the when it ETVs draw a card. The gain life when the first land is the white. The mana is kind of red in a ritual, but it's kind of associated with green as well because it's a form of ramp. And the damage was red. They basically just checkmarked a bunch of things from each color and slapped them on and like put a f like a fancy look. Omnath, in my opinion, is just a mistake. And then Uro, we all saw this coming. Uro is a terrible card because you gain life, you draw, and you play land. You put a land in. You don't need all those effects without the life. Like it's growth spiral with an upside, and it's recurrable. Theros was a terrible set, and there were very few cards that were actually really powerful, and this was the one card that was most powerful. To be 100% honest, if Uro had cost 3, and cost 2 green-blue, 3 green-blue, probably wouldn't affect it as bad. If it didn't put the land into hand and rather just gain 3 life and drew a card, again, good. It's just, they put, like, with both these cards, they just put stuff on that it didn't need to be on. Next up is Pioneer, alright? Uh, okay. I don't play Pioneer, Modern, or Legacy, so I can't say much about these cards. This is a small disclaimer, but I'm going to provide what, from what I understand of the format. Let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong about something, or if I'm making a wrong assumption. Balustrade Spy and Under CD Enforcer are both part of the Oops All Spells combo. Oops All Spells... I don't like the deck because it beat out Mindless Dredge in Legacy, but that's like my only reason for disliking it, because it's a fun combo. It is actually a fun combo. I find it as a fun combo. Being able to run only spells in your deck. You know, decks like Charbelcher, Mindless Dredge, these decks were difficult to make because there being no spell lands and then we got the MDFC lands now am I upset that wizards made MDFC lands no I like them they make a hot they make drafting difficult but do I find that they should have tweaked it or maybe thought about it a bit more with these combos probably so, it, I don't know. I'm not upset they banned them. I'm more upset that Oops All Spells is such a dominating deck in a format like Pioneer that they need to be banned. It's, just, it's, yeah. Uh, Teferi, again, turn three Teferi is a mistake of a card simply because it's doing too many things. Similar to Omnath. Oh, it bounces. That's a white-blue effect. Check mark. It draws a card. That's a check mark. Being able to play things with different things. That's a check mark. Taxation effect. Check mark. You know? Oop, they can't die when they bounce it. Like, just bouncing and drawing? That's gotta... That can't be good. So we gotta make... We gotta make four. Yeah, and by adding that tax effect, we get the kind of white effect. Maybe this will make white-blue taxes rather than white-black. 
I'm not assuming anything on Wizard's part. And to be honest, if you look at this, if a new player looks at this card, they'll know it's good, but they won't be like, oh my gosh, this is so broken. The problem with Teferi is by the time he comes out, he's going to bounce a relevant threat. He's going to get you card advantage. And if they don't kill it right away, it's just going to tick up, tick up, tick up, tick up. It's just a bad card, to be honest. It just makes counter spells worse. It makes instants worse. It makes everything like that worse while also benefiting you way too highly. So, yeah. Um, okay. See historic reasons. Wilderness Reclamation. Um, so, what's hilarious is that in R&D, I can imagine they were like, Oh, Wilderness Reclamation decks are going to get beated by Teferi and his ability. So, um... That's probably why they're banning Wilderness Reclamation. You know? Modern, Field of the Dead. <sighs> so, Field of the Dead. I like the card. I think it's actually a relatively balanced card when you pull it and you try to build a deck around it. At a kitchen table. It's like, how am I going to get more than seven? There's only five basics plus this is six. So how am I supposed to get seven? Oh, I can use, like, gates. Ooh, maybe this Shockland? Yeah! Isn't there, like, waste? Do snow lands count different? Like, this card is fun on its own. The problem is that there's too many cards around it that just make it so good. You can throw it in any control shell with multiple lands, and it's fine. You can put it in a lands matter build. It's I like the card if you just looked at it from the kitchen table aspect, but in the constructed very, very competitive aspect. It's it's a very bad card. So, I understand spanning, although, for me personally, I like the card, but I understand Field of the Dead being banned. Mystic Sanctuary. A common land that can most of the time enters the battlefield tapped is banned in modern. Okay, so, Mystic Sanctuary... I didn't realize how good this card was in Modern. I, I didn't actually understand that. Like, I understood Field was a part of the Titan decks and a lot of Controls decks, but I had no idea Sanctuary was all over like that. Um, Mystic Sanctuary is a fetchable land that allows you to get powerful instant sorceries back. I can see its power. I didn't actually know how big of a meta was, so I can't really provide my huge argument on why I think it should have been banned, but, like... I can understand how it should be banned, and thanks to its effects with shocks and fetches, I can see how when you have those cards, it's just way too broken. Next up, Simeon Spirit Guide. <laughs> Simeon Spirit Guide. Okay, now. I can understand why they would want to ban this card because of the Cascade shenanigans going on. But they fixed the Cascade rules. Now, I don't really know why they would want to ban Simeon Spear Guide. I think the card's fun. I think the card... Since it's basically a free ritual, it's like a card... It's... You're wasting slots in your deck for relevant action for the fast mana, and I guess you could say, well, isn't that the reason for a card like Lano or Elves or other rituals? And no, it's not going to add to the storm count. It's not going to provide a relevant body on the board. It's going to add red. But with all of these new oops all spells, with Char Belcher, with all of this, I can see how dominating it would be with that just free fast mana. So, it's banned. I, I understand this, but I personally wish it stayed around just a bit longer so I could build Simeon Spirit Burn. Anyway, Tibalt's trickery. <laughs> oh, he's so tricky. Oh, he's such a tricky person. Tibalt, remember? Remember when he was a joke? He had no good cards. Remember when he was a, like a, a meme or a joke? Remember that? Remember when he wasn't format warping, causing bans and rule changes? <laughs> uh, yeah, Tibalt's trickery. Uh, lots of text. So, its interaction with Cascade 
similar to how it's going on in Standard and Historic, it makes games coin flips because people build their decks where they're going to hit this card, they're going to hit their Emrakul, and as Saffron Olive did, he decided to make the deck more variants by adding different arts of Emrakul, which I, I, I love that. But the fact that you could build a deck with nine cards and it be a dominating deck that will win most games is absurd. It's just absurd. So, and here's the thing. I love Triple Trickery countering your opponent's spells. Like, as I've said in uh, YouTube comments, as I've said, Tibble, uh, sorry, no. Magic is a social game. Imagine you sitting across your friend. You're playing a mono red deck. They go to cast something, and you're like, oh no, and you go Tibble Trickery. And all of a sudden, you guys are like, hmm. And then you, you, you roll the dice and you mill the cards. And then all of a sudden they hit something worse and you're just like, why? Or they hit something, or they hit something worse that they cast. And they're just like, oh man. And you're like, yeah, I tricked you. It's... I love the card as a mono red counterspell. I don't love the card as a combo coin flip. That is all. See historic reasons. Legacy. <laughs> Arkham's Astro Leap is banned. <laughs> Arkham's Astro Leap is card advantage. It's perfect mana. It's a snow permanent, so it can add... Um, any snow mana, it's technically, you can add snow mana, it, when you look at this card, you don't think it's good, but when you realize how exactly people can play it, it becomes too good. So, that, yeah, that's, that's my opinion. Well, it's a silly card, and like, you look at it and you're like, why would this be banned? You think about how it implements, and you're just like, well, wait a second. That's too good. Dreadhorde Arcanist is banned in Legacy. Why would they ban this card? Like, I know I don't keep up with Legacy, but I, and I know this card's like playing in a bunch of Delver decks. And I, yeah, I know you can cast like, like Lightning Bolts and Brainstorms again, which is pretty good. But it, it, it was, does it mean it's ban worthy? I mean, I can understand going turn one lightning bolt, turn two this, turn three, brainstorm bolts, play another bolts. Like, I, I, I can see that. It's just a weird card. And, uh. uh <laughs> oh, you, there's been plenty of videos and plenty of articles on the internet explaining why Oko is a bad card. Go look at one of them and then make your opinion on it. Three green, blue, plus one, minus one. I fixed Oko. Uh, and Vintage, Lurus is banned. Um, or unbanned. The fact that they needed to ban, not restrict, but ban a card in Vintage of all formats because of a mechanic called Companion just shows how terrible Companion was. And they changed Companion, so you have to pay three, so they're going to unban it and see how it does. I also wonder how it's going to do. Because, um, it's, it's interaction with cards like Black Lotus, Lion's Eye Diamond, and other f things like that is very bad. So, we're going to see how it affects it. I hope it affects those formats in a positive way and inspires creative deck building in a sense of you can create these, like, funny aggro decks that Companion Luris, so you can have, like, crazy lotus plays or something in vintage that's what i hope i just hope it doesn't devolve into your deck's not lures companion that must mean it's not a meta deck so and then the rules change um so 
I don't know how to explain it, so we're just going to scroll down because they're going to talk about it. Um, so let's go look through all of their reasons of why the cards are banned. All right, so. Decks built around Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, are played in, are the most played in Historic and have been for a while now. While their decks have contested for that position, the steady dominance of Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, shows it how it too powerful it is for the how show it is too powerful for the format. Because of the examples of how this card is performed in other larger formats, we do not feel like we need to suspend the card to see how the format reacts. To increase the diversity of decks at the top of the Historic metagame, Uro of Titan of Nature's Wrath is banned Historic. Yes, <laughs> Omnath is blah, 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 suspended. It would be harmed by reintroducing it. Yeah, okay, Omnath is a mistake. Yeah, so we're good. Pioneer. Our vision for Pioneer is to be a collection of the most fun, powerful, and iconic cards from strategies from recent standard formats. However, there is a dividing line between powerful and iconic and overbearing and unfun. 100% agree. In this update, we're addressing several cards and strategies that we feel cross the li cross that line and that aren't representative of the play experience we'd like Pioneer to offer. Uro has become one of the most dominant. Hey, wait, has become one of the most dominant creatures in Historic or Pioneer, and is featured in several of the most playing and most winning decks. Like, isn't that exactly what they just said about Historic? Ultimately, we feel Uro's power level. Yes. Yes, like this. That's just what you. This you reworded what you said for historic because that's that's the reason. Those are the reasons. So yeah. In addition, we're taking this opportunity to ban to Fairy Time Raveler and Wilderness Reclamation from Pioneer as cards that previously overstayed their welcome in Standard. <laughs> Removing to Fairy Time Raveler will have the added benefit of lowering the power level of Niv Delight decks, which were among the most played and most winning archetypes. Without Teferi to hold them in check, we're concerned that the metagame might share of Wilderness Reclamation decks would rise, so we're choosing to preempt that outcome. Finally, we're seeing, we're seeing a concerning win rate and metagame share for the Oops All Spells deck, which, by the way, I had a, a small note. Um, I was eating some cereal, right? And I, and I had these Crunch Berries, right? So, if you've heard of Crunch Berries... Uh, Crunch Berries are this delicious cereal. It's a really good, trust me. And I remember the Oops All Berries, right? I'm like, oh yeah, those Oops All Berries are great. And then I was like, wait a second, that's where the Oops All Spells name comes from. It's Oops All Spells, Oops All Berries. And I'm like, I had an epiphany today, and I'm very proud. <laughs> so, just a funny little note I wanted to add. So if you're ever so if you are ever wonder if you are ever wondering where Oops All Spells came from, it came from the Oops All Bears. Alright. Which uses Battle Straits by an understanding form to mill its entire library, having no cards that count as lands while in the library. Given the difficulty of interacting with the strategy or with the strategy, it isn't easily held in check by natural metagame forces. What? A, a deck that's uninteractable because it can go off super early sounds like it needs to be banned <laughs> we don't believe pioneer can be at its most fun with oops all spells being a large part of the metagame so we're choosing to ban balustrade spy and understanding enforcement and understanding enforcer or informer sorry so small little thing here our vision for Pioneer is to be a collection of the most fun, powerful, and iconic cards and strategies from recent standard formats. That line, and then the how Oops All Spells in Pioneer effects, gives me this weird feeling, if that makes sense. There's this weird feeling of the only reason these decks work is because they printed MDFCs. And MDFCs and how balustrades by work isn't a standard combo. So Pioneer being a collection of cards from recent standard formats and combos and stuff and fun stuff and seeing how two cards clicked from way old it does not make me happy. It just it, it hurts if that makes sense. So on to modern. 
<laughs> As in Pioneer, Earl has become a dominant fixture across many of the top modern decks and open to space in the metagame for a greater variety when we're choosing to ban Earl. It's, it's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. They banned it because it's too good, it's taking up too much of the metagame, and they want to provide a bit more diversity by banning Uro. They literally said as in, as in Pioneer. It's the same reason. Uro is a messed up magic card and we do not need it in any format. Except for the formats where it's fun. Like Brawl, Commander, and I guess Legacy now? Or formats where it's too slow like Vintage. Good. That's good. Along with Uro, we're also addressing two land cards frequently used by ramp and control strategies that we feel are decreasing diversity of gameplay patterns. Field of the Dead and Mystic Sanctuary. Both lands create repetitive and non-interactive game states in the late game for relatively no low deck building cost. To promote more back and forth gameplay interaction over win conditions, we're choosing to remove them. Yeah, okay. Acceptable reasons for both. Simeon Spirit Guide is a card we've had our eye on for some time as an enabler that speeds up fast combo decks. As the modern pool card pool has grown, so too has the capability for decks to assemble early game-winning combinations from hand. With some recent examples including Oops All Spells, Char Belger Variants, and some builds of the recent Tybalt's Trickery deck, <laughs> oh, we're coming to that soon, to slow down that category of combo decks as a whole and give opponents more time to set up interactive plays in the early game, Simeon Spirit Guide is banned. And those are fair reasons. I, I agree with all of the reasons provided. I agree with all of them. Finally, there... While there's been much discussion about new Tybalt Trickery decks in several formats, we see Modern as the format where those decks are uniquely problematic via Tybalt's Trickery's interaction with Cascade. While the overall win rate of the deck hasn't shown to be problematic, we believe it contributes to non-games that make Modern less fun to play. As the goal of this update is to shake up the metagame into a more fun spot, we're concerned that a, con that a continued metagame presence of Tybalt's Trickery decks would work against that goal. Therefore, we are banning Tybalt's Trickery in Modern. Yeah. Um, now, I want to... I, wanted to... I want to know something about Tybalt's Trickery, and they didn't say it here. I want to know what they were thinking when they designed Tybalt's Trickery. And I'm not saying... Oh, how did they get to the cascade-like effect, and how did they get this and that? No, I'm asking, did they plan on this being able to counter your own spells? Did they plan on this interaction? Or did they just think of this as a mono-red way to deal with it and have a counter spell? That's what I want to know. That's, that's really my own... That's really the thing I want to learn. Because while I... Oh, I love Tybalt's Trickery as a card in a social game of magic as a red spell. I don't want... I don't want to be... How do I put this? I don't want to be judgmental of their decision if I think it's fun as a red counter spell. If that's what they intended to make it. Like, I won't announce and yell and say that Tybalt Trickery is a terrible card. Wizards should have never made it if their intention was to make a card that is a red counter spell. Because I love it as a red counter spell. I love it less as a no end combo. That's just doesn't work. So. Yeah. Well, anyway, on to Legacy. While balance hasn't looked oh as hasn't looked problematic in Legacy, we've heard community feedback that a few cards have come have come to draw too much mo of the focus for deck building and gameplay. Well, I can't argue with this statement because I don't know enough about Legacy. The 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 line while balance hasn't looked problematic in Legacy, we've heard community feedback that a few cards have come to draw too much focus. Like this this statement is essentially them saying, "Uh, the reason we didn't ban Oko is because we didn't think it was that good." <laughs> you know, like, ew. Ew. 
anyway. Oko Thief of Crowns has proven much too has proven powerful in other formats, but with Legacy having an especially high overall power level, we'd been waiting to see whether it would continue to fall in line with the average power of the rest of the metagame. Over time, we've seen Oko continue to remain a major metagame presence and a contributor to low diversity. With its huge card pool, Legacy is a format that should that should offer tremendous variety of deck building options and reward innovative deck construction and tuning. Because of its power and flexibility, Oko can provide an easy answer given to an un un, un sorry, hold on. <clears throat> unanticipated threats and defenses, and generally a hum. generally homogenizes gameplay patterns in a way that's that's counter to the spirit of the format. Therefore, we're choosing to ban Oko Thief of Crowns. Is Oko. <laughs> Ooh, having a bit too much of your own joke. Arkham's Ash Lim is another card that has contributed to the power and consistency of Snowco decks. <laughs> Traditionally, like a C-Tech, builders need to make choices about whether to have access to many colors or build a mana that's resilient to disruption like Wasteland and like Blood Moon. <laughs> Arkham's Astral Leap allows mana bases to have both high color flexibility and high resilience to mana denial. That's a uniquely important part of the Legacy metagame. Ultimately, we think a narrow class of decks having such resilience for relatively low investments is an, adva is an advantage that, le that leads to less metagame diversity. You've created threats that deal with the problems of complicated mana bases. You made a card that made those mana bases way less, way less, um, way less easy to deal with, and it was an easy inclusion with a, another card you banned. Really? At least Snow isn't breaking standard yet. Next, Dreadheart and Cadenus has proven to be a powerful and game-defining in a way that further adds to cards and strategies that were already among the most powerful, like Tamir Delver. Without Oko, we anticipate that Dreadheart and Cadenus strategies would only become more prominent. Ultimately, the contin the com sorry the community sentiment we've heard is that Dreadheart and Cadenus makes gameplay revolve around too early in the game, that too many games come down to whether an opponent can immediately remove it. Therefore, we're choosing to ban Dreadheart and Cadenus from Legacy. I like that. I like that reasoning. I can see that reasoning of how you need to immediately remove it. But I also see the problem of, like, just run more removal. And most of the community feedback might just be people that lost to it because they couldn't deal with it and are just kind of like, <laughs> ban it, ban it. But the reason is good, so I can't. Ooh, more Uro. Finally, we did discuss banning Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, in Legacy as well, but we feel its power level is more in line with the overall power of Legacy as compared to Historic, Pioneer, and Modern. The bar is high for what three and four mana spells need to accomplish in Legacy. And we believe Uro can coexist as a competitive but not dominant option. Additionally, the bans of Oko, Thief of Crown, and Arco's Astrolabe would significantly decrease the metagame share of existing decks that Uro naturally slots into. Okay, so in two weeks, when everyone is yelling about the very brand new, like, Soul Tie combo deck, or Soul Tie, or four color Uro deck that's dominating the legacy metagame, we're gonna want to come back to this. So screenshot it and get ready. <laughs> uh, no, I, I actually agree with this. I do, I do find this um, counter argument to actually be a, a good counter argument of why they shouldn't ban a row. Um, I I do like this reasoning. Some people might just want to say ban a row, ban a row, ban a row, but I I like all their reasonings. So I don't I don't want to argue with it. I, although I do think this might backfire on them when people build it. Currently, I think we're in a safe spot in the meta game. Uh, also, I don't know, okay, sorry, I don't I'm not in a good spot in Legacy, but um, I just I, I do agree with the statement of how with Legacy's format is pushed. But we'll see. Vintage 
shortly after the release of Ikoria Lair of Behemoths, Lures of the Dream Den was added to the Vintage Ban list. It's the only card on that list solely due to power level for the unique reason that Restriction was not a meaningful solution given the pa companion mechanic. Wait a second, Standard Commanders are just too good because you can put them in any format, including formats where they can be broken, and your way of banning cards won't work. At that time, the power level benefit of using Lurs as a companion was far too high relative to its deck building cost. However, we've since changed the companion rule to require additional mana investment, which comes at a premium in the context of vintage power level. A key aspect of the spirit of vintage is that we'd like as much of a magic cards library to be available or sorry, as much of a magic card library to be available as possible. So we're running the experiment of unbanning Lurus's Dreamland. We'll be keeping our eye on what this does to the metagame and are and are willing to revert the change if needed. We believe that Lurus should be given another chance to prove itself under the new companion rule. Good. I like this. It's good. Good job. You made a solid reason for unbanning. Now having to errata and change the entire rules of the whole thing because you didn't realize how good a format would be, and thanks to the stupid magic genie, uh, come on, cascade rule change. Um, oh my gosh, this is a lot. Jeez, modal double. Here we go. Modal double-faced cards were designed to follow both faces to be playable in all situations. For example, if an effect lets you cast spells from your graveyard, players expect to be able to cast either face. Feedback has shown us, however, that in situations where certain criteria are mentioned, being able to play or cast the back face when it doesn't meet those criteria is not intuitive. This confusion, plus being allowed to cast spells without paying their mana costs that you shouldn't be able to, makes Cascade an issue. As a result, we're tweaking Cascade, such that the spell you cast off the triggered ability must also have lesser converted mana cost than the spell with Cascade. Here's the new Cascade rule. I'm not going to read the whole Cascade rule here. You can read it for yourself. Here we go. I'm going to highlight it just so you can read it a bit better. Okay, here you go. Read it. Um, pause the video. Uh, we're going to go for the examples. For example, if you cast Bloodbraid Elf and Exile Valky God of Lies from your library, you'll be able to cast Valky, but not Tybalt. On the other hand, if you exile Kazima, God of the Voyage, you can cast Kazima or the Onan Keel, as each face has a lesser converted mana cost than Bloodbraid Elf. The change isn't limited to double face cards, it also changes the way Cascade works with anything that has a dominant set of characteristics, like the adventurer cards from Throne of Eldraine. For example, if Bloodbraid Elf causes you to exile Fae of Wishes, you may cast Fae of Wishes, but you can make cost cap granted. So wait, you're saying that the whole time Adventures worked the same way as Cascade does now? So I could have built a deck that I would have three mana and granted. Uh, wow, <laughs> I didn't actually know that's how Adventure worked. Um, I always thought you could only play Adventures from your hand. So and finally, the interaction between split cards and Cascade is unchanged. The converted mana cost of a split card is a total converted mana cost of its halves. If you Cascade into a split card with lesser, blah blah blah. blah yes. So, final opinions, based on reading their reasonings and stuff, I'm going to go through each one and tell you what my opinion. Agree. Agree. Disheartening, in a way, but agree. Disheartening, but agree. Whole oh, agree. Yeah, agree. You know my answer to this one. Agree. Disheartening, but agree. Kind of confused, but agree. Agree, but... Upsetting. Really disheartening, but agree. Agree! Agree, but... Whoa, that card is... Is a common. Agree, but I'll, kind of agree, but I think this card should have stayed because I think people should just incorporate more removal into their decks, and it would cause a shift. And then, and then if that shift was too much, then you banned it. But whatever. Oko, agree. It's Oko. 
Love that Alaris was unbanned. We should not have any cards, but the cards that were printed before Magic was in the phase that is now on the vintage banned list. We shouldn't. That should be Sha... 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 Sh how do you pronounce it? Shazhar... Shahar... Shazhar hard? Oh, crap, I don't know how to... Gosh, dang it, Don, you don't know how to pronounce something. Chaos Orb, and then, like, anti-cards, and all the other stuff. Those are the cards that should be banned. Because that was before Magic was its thing. Okay? Luris is not a card that should be on the, on the ban list. This kitty is not going in that zone. Rules change. Um, my opinion on the rules change? Wait, it wasn't. This is Dom Rocks, counting down the February 15th, 2021, banning restricted announcements. Now, I'm gonna go have a bowl of Oops All Berries.